States across the country are taking action against the opioid epidemic by suing pharmaceutical companies, expanding the availability of naloxone and increasing access to addiction treatment. Over the next few weeks, we'll be telling you what leaders in nearby Utah are doing and how Idaho's policymakers could follow suit in the future. Legislators there recently dedicated $67 million to a three-phase project that pinpoints efforts in a specific area to help a specific population. Six on Your Side's Karen Lair joins us live in studio to explain in tonight's Finding Hope. Well, Don, when Utah legislators decided to make fighting the opioid crisis a top priority, they narrowed their focus to the geographic area with the biggest problem, an area close to the core of Salt Lake City, near a public park, and a place people passing by were nearly guaranteed to witness drug deals, illicit acts, and even opioid overdoses. It was uh, a place where few outsiders wanted to go. This was Pioneer Park two years ago. You could walk down there any time, day or night, see people having sex, defecating on the street. You could see people with needles in their arms that were drug dealers openly in front of police, selling drugs, people buying drugs, people passed out on the street from either drugs or alcohol. This is Pioneer Park now. Even though you see a, a fair amount of homeless people on the street, it's nothing like it was. The area in Salt Lake City became the focus of a statewide initiative in 2017 known as Operation Rio Grande. Rio Grande was a cesspool, was a den of iniquity. Before we started it, you could just go to any corner. You could drive anywhere you wanted in that area and buy drugs. The $67 million project is a massive three-phase crackdown on Rio Grande Street. Phase one, restore law and order with efforts to eliminate the source of the problem. Gosh, a good hundred officers went into that area and took the drug dealing out of the area. Phase two, with funding from the federal government, was to get addicts into treatment. That's where Randall Carlisle and the Odyssey House step in. We wouldn't have gotten that financial expansion thanks to the federal government. We couldn't have dealt with these people. And, and so the situation would be the same down there today as it was a couple of years ago. Project leaders are now in phase three, aiming to connect those new to recovery with housing and employment opportunities. Nobody can complete our program successfully without having a job and housing. The task doesn't come cheap, requiring resources from the city, county and state, but recovery centers say the progress is worth the price tag. Typical clients at Odyssey House see success rates between 62 and 64 percent, but those entering the program from Operation in Rio Grande are seeing a completion rate of 74%. Every one of them says I was so sick and tired of living that way. The results, according to county leaders, are measurable and due in large part to a partnership among agencies at every level. We're no longer working separate than each other. We're all coming together and trying to tackle it together because it has affected our entire county. So next Monday night, we're going to be digging deeper into how Utah lawmakers were able to get the funding needed to expand access to treatment, nearly doubling the amount of treatment beds they needed. So Karen, how do they know if the project is working? Well, that's a big part of it, right? They're yeah. spending $67 million, so they want to make sure it's working. So that's also part of phase three. So they've been able to increase the number of check-ins at Salt Lake City homeless shelters. They've also seen 164 people successfully enter treatment programs and more than 150 people from Operation Rio Grande are now in longtime housing and employment. So it's working. And we hope to learn from what's happening in Salt Lake City. Yeah, we just need that money. Just need the money. All right, yeah. thanks, Karen. <laughs>